This is a Dana 60 front axle. This is all out of a Bronco and we cut the factory hole out of the floor and put all the Bronco parts in so it does look OEM. The desolate cross tube and shock mounts which bolted right in. We're kind of just more here to have fun than we are trying to make big travel numbers and big flex and all that stuff. Hi, I'm Nick Eisenhower. This is my 1995 Ford Lightning, one of 761 made in 1995 in white. We screwed it all up. I don't have anybody to ask me questions, uh, so this will be a very unique Terra episode. I uh, will just be interviewing myself, not in a weird schizophrenic third person style. <laughs> I'm just gonna give, guys, give you guys a little run through on the truck and kind of what we did and why we did it and all that. You can follow this whole build series on the Heatwave YouTube channel. We filmed the whole process. We built the car in two weeks. We actually drove it on the 15th day and we documented all of that as well as our first trip to Moab. So you can check all that out. I'm sure there'll be a link somewhere somewhere in all of this. This started its life as an actual Ford Lightning. Uh, what a Ford Lightning was is in the late 90s or early 90s, uh, Ford had a side company or a, a subdivision of Ford called SVT where they had like the Ford, Co the Mustang Cobras and stuff like that. And so the Lightning was kind of their uh, like street version of the F-150. It had a like an appearance package, so it had like a lip on the front bumper, it had a different rear bumper, they had the all white out grille, or the trucks came in three colors, white, black, and red. And that all it was all color matched, so the bezels were the same color as everything else, which is very unique to Ford, because Ford had all chrome front ends normally. The engines were a little bit bigger. These came stock with 5.8 liter 351 Windsors that had GT40 heads, uh, a big intake manifold, different camshaft, and made a good amount more power than the stock 351 Windsor. Um, the rear differentials were a little bit different. They had upgraded sway bars and a different spring and shock package, obviously because it was a lower truck with different wheels and all that stuff. And so we bought one and did the complete opposite of what Ford wanted us to do with it. And we put Super Duty one-ton axles under it. Why would you do that? Uh, the front of the truck is an entire Desolate Motorsports bolt-on front end. You do have to weld the coil uh, or the shock hoops in through here but it is does locate on factory shock hoop or uh, factory bolt holes in the frame. Radius arm, same thing, all that stuff. You have to drill a few holes, but it is almost a direct bolt-in kit for the front of the car. You have to buy power steering upgrades and a ram upgrade, or else there's no way you're gonna steer this thing. And you obviously have to trim a whole lot of the stock body out to fit a larger diameter tire. If you look here, you'll see some uh, three inch Fox IBPs, which is an internal bypass. And the way, for those of you at home that don't understand, an internal bypass, it's a three inch outside diameter can, and then inside that is a two and a half inch can. And then in that can, it's got bypass holes internally, so you don't have the tubes on the outside. So that way with this truck, I can run, without having to run two shocks, I have a coilover and a bypass in one shock, which is very common nowadays in street trucks and all that stuff. But I wanted to add, put that technology into this thing, so it gives us a little bit more tunability and adjustability when Keith and I kind of dig into this thing and really start tuning it, it'll be nice to have more adjustment than just like, let's put more spring, let's take more spring, let's add some valving. Now we have some bypass spots, we can move some things around. Um, it also has the compression adjusters on top of the shock, which is pretty standard for Fox. 2.0 bump stop, big coil, coil springs. Um, which hard, what's hard on this thing is with the shock being directly on the axle, and it's new for me. I know the rock guys are gonna be like, oh, you're an idiot, you gotta use this rate, or you gotta use that rate. I don't know, man. I'm used to desert trucks with trailing arms that have like a two to one motion ratios and all that stuff. So I was like, okay, Keith sent me some numbers like 100 over 200s or 150 over 200s, and we're still way off. It's so much spring. This thing rides like, but Ace Ventura, when he's driving the monster truck and he's bouncing all over the place. That's us in this thing. Literally, as soon as this thing hits any sort of bump in the road, you're just bouncing all over the place. So it definitely needs some shock tuning and some shock love. So any footage that Will or anybody has of this thing moving, please don't judge our shock choices. These things literally, from Fox, out of the box, 
onto the truck. All I did was open up all the adjusters and put way less than the recommended nitrogen pressure to try and help a little bit. But yeah, thanks to Fox, they helped us out big time with these. And uh, yeah, now I've got really fancy shocks on a beater old Ford truck. <laughs> so, and on the internet and everywhere, or even myself, you'll hear people say, oh, Super Duty axles, Super Duty axles. With Super Duty, what these are technically, uh, this is a Dana 60 front axle out of a 2005 and up Ford F250 or F350. Um, those are the most common used Super Duty axles that people talk about. Uh, you can find them in junkyards, on websites, and on the internet, and they're actually pretty affordable. I picked this set up for 1500 bucks. Um, the only real money I had to put into them was by choice. I re-geared them and put that front helical uh, posi track in the front of it. But most people can just run the stock axles in a lighter weight rig. Your gear ratios will be off a little bit, but um, it'll definitely get the job done. And the nice thing about this desolate kit with these Super Duty axles is the fact that you don't have to cut off the radius arm brackets. So most trucks and most kits uh, will change it to like a traditional style four link or a three link front suspension. This is still a radius arm style front suspension, which is factory. Uh, it does limit the flex a little bit, but for the kind of style of this truck and we're trying to build a simple truck, uh, we are totally fine with leaving the radius arms. I can show you right here what I'm talking about. So this is the main tube here that drives down and through and then the upper arm attaches to that in the middle. But then that way you can retain the factory bushings in the axle without having to spend, you know, two days worth of cutting and grinding, cleaning that axle off. Um, it, does, it definitely adds to the ease of the install of this kit. It does limit the flex and the travel a bit, but I mean, we're kind of just more here to have fun than we are trying to make big travel numbers and big flex and all that stuff. So from now on, when somebody asks or you read on the internet, you somebody say, oh, you have Super Duty axles, Super Duty axles, that's what it is. The front is a Dana 60. Um, traditionally out of like an 05 and up is the most common. The rear is a Sterling 10 and a half and or 10 and a quarter. Um, and that's just literally directly pulled out of the trucks and put into these things. So there's a little tech tip for you. The inside of the truck we kept stock. Uh, it is pretty cool. Something different about the Lightnings versus the normal F-150s was that it did have two bucket seats. Uh, this one's not functional, but it had like air-filled side bolsters, leg bolsters, uh, the leg rests moved. There's just something kind of more streety and racy. The dashboards are all the same, but we left it all stock. We did convert this truck from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive, which is what you'll find the shifter there. We found this is all out of a Bronco and we cut the factory hole out of the floor and put all the Bronco parts in so it does look OEM. That'll look nice and clean inside. But other than that, we added a rugged radios and an S-Pod uh, like power distribution block for like the roof lights and so we can expand later with accessories as we add them. One thing this truck is missing is some rock sliders. Uh, we went to Moab and we were extremely careful with this car because we didn't, we ran out of time to build some sort of side protection. Um, it does look kind of cool, fits our 90s monster truck theme, but, uh, but yeah, that is next on our list of fabrication things to do. Uh, before diving under the car, we can keep moving back to the visual things. Uh, this serves no purpose other than looking cool, just like a standard old school headache rack with lights and everything on it. It is made out of two inch tubing, so I guess technically if we flipped it upside down, it'd help us a little bit, but it does bolt into the stock bed. We'd utilize uh, a lot of things out of the Rough Stuff catalog for the back of this truck. Their uh, Sterling 10 and a half, which is what the rear axle is considered, their truss kit, as well as their upper link pivots. Uh, we made some lower link pivots and sway bar tabs and shock tabs and all that stuff. And then we used the Rough Stuff frame pivots as well for the four link. Uh, we went with like a standard style triangulated four link. So the lower links are straight, upper links are triangulated, shocks go off the axle, kind of like a short course truck. We tossed around the idea of doing dual triangulated, like throwing the lower links at an angle and the uppers at an angle, but in the 15 days we had to build this car, we decided that was just a little too much. The axles are re-geared with Motive 538s. Uh, the rear is actually the stock limit slip, which so far has done great. We know in the future we're gonna have to upgrade some of that stuff. Right, the front of the car has a helical posi track, so it's like a gear driven posi track. Um, it's just kinda, you gotta get two feet going at the same time, and it locks the front diff up, and then you can crawl up and over anything you want with four low. The back of the car, pretty simple shock hoops that tie into the frame, all welded in. 
Uh, we did a sway bar in the back here. We chopped the bed, obviously, to clear the big tires. Cut the back of the bed and the rear bumper for this tube bumper, just as a little extra protection. This thing hang, hung way down here, and we knew that was never gonna last, so that was a quick last minute thing. A 40 inch BFG takeoffs, so I think these tires we ran the mint with. No, these are KOH tires because we got two plugs in the sides. So this is actually a slow leaker that we found after the race. Perfect for a four wheel drive truck. The fronts came off after the mint, so. 17 inch method 103s, the exact same wheel that we run on the 6100 truck and Chris's F100, just with the eight lug for the Super Duty. We kind of went with the, the gold and the silver to kind of look like a Miller light can. We do call this the Miller Lightning. Uh, we're big fans of Miller genuine draft beers around here, so. Uh, that's kind of the style for the car. Other than that, there's not much to it. You know, 40 inch spare in the back. We put the battery in the bed. Uh, I mounted my Miller light cooler. A fun story about that. One night we were all hanging out in the shop and I was on Instagram and probably had one too many Miller lights and I found Miller light had an Instagram. So I drafted up a rather lengthy DM to Miller explaining how much I love their beers and how we felt they needed to support our race program. And I got a response of like a, ha ha, thanks for the response, send me your address and we'll send you something. And they sent me that cooler. So I pretty much cherished that cooler with my life. Uh, and I finally found a permanent home for it. So it lives here in this truck. Tailgate from the previous owner was shaved. So there's no door handle. There's no aluminum piece that comes here. None of that stuff. The door pop is from the inside which is cool, but I wanted to keep the tailgate functioning because as much as Darren wants to convince you that you need some big wild rock crawling thing, you need to bounce it off boulders like him and Garrett get all crazy, no, 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 no. I'm the king of the bypasses here. I take the side trails. I'm not really into breaking this thing. So I felt having a tailgate would be nice. So I could get to the top of the trail quicker than everybody else. And I could sit here and I could watch Darren wreck his car. When it came to the back of the truck, we decided to kind of keep it simple, like pre-runner style, you know? Shock, simple bed cage with shocks to the bed. The down tubes to the headache rack, spare tire, just ratchet strapped to the floor. Super simple. If you want to dive underneath it here, you see a uh, rough stuff diff cover. That's the rough stuff truss, the upper links. Uh, I did all the brake lines and brake tabs. Uh, I had ordered a customer the wrong width sway bar a long time ago, and it cost way too much to ship back. So this has been sitting around our shop forever, and I decided that it fit really well right here. I'll probably get ripped apart on the internet for there not being a tube connecting this but it's so I can pull the tank out. <laughs> I didn't want to have to cut the tube out later. So I run the truck off of this stock auxiliary rear tank. I got rid of the front tank for the upper links. So this is like a 15 gallon auxiliary tank that F-150s came with dual tanks. So I just run the truck primarily off of this tank. Uh, other than that, uh, you know, standard limit straps, sway bar tabs, all that fun stuff, stock brakes off of a Super Duty. Um, we kind of tried to keep it tucked up high and out of the way and simple. It was really fun building this truck because I didn't have to use the TIG welder at all. I did almost, or we, did almost the entire thing with a MIG welder, which is different for us. Usually everything in the shop we TIG weld. So it was kind of fun to go back. I felt like I was going back in time and just MIG welding everything. I realized how much faster MIG welding is and it's messier, yes, and it burns your arms a ton more. It puts holes in all your clothes, but it's cool. It gets the job done. It's a pretty simple truck. It's got up underneath it, Fun fact, I guess, talking about underneath it. This obviously was a two wheel drive truck like we had talked. Uh, I took the transmission and transfer case straight out of a running Bronco. And I didn't do a single minute of research on it. I just assumed that it would all work and it actually does. The literally converter, everything bolted straight up and in. The cross members all bolt right into the frame into factory holes. And so literally within one day I had a two wheel drive truck to four wheel drive truck, um, which is pretty exciting. I did the, uh, Desolate Motorsports makes a magnetic, uh, like, reluctor wheel for the, um, like, the vehicle speed sensor. It goes on the back of the transmission, so I did that on the back of this one, so the Speedo works. Speedo still doesn't work, not Desolate's fault. It never worked on this truck, so there's something else deeper in here. I used some real, authentic halogen KC Daylighters. They put out enough light for how slow this truck goes, but we just felt it was very period correct, and we couldn't put anything else up there. We're not putting big LED bars or anything goofy like that, no, no. This thing needed. The only thing I was bummed about is I thought they still made those in chrome, but they don't. So I got black backed ones. I didn't get chrome ones. Under the hood, absolutely nothing exciting. But I might as well show it. When we were talking engine stuff, you'll notice all the Bronco guys and F-150 guys right now are gonna notice the intake is completely different. It's a single tube intake, which they're all jealous of because most of the time the Windsors and the 302s have like a dual tube and you gotta get this adapter and it's just a pain in the butt. 
the lightning was a single big tube. Uh, apparently this makes way more flow, works way better. Um, aside from that, uh, the only thing we got fancy under here is the desolate cross tube and shock mounts, which bolted right in. It was, I can't express how simple that kit was. Like knowing now how it all goes, I could probably knock this whole front end out in a weekend. Like it's very simple to put together. Don't quote me on that. If you want your truck built, it's gonna take at least five to seven business days and I'm gonna charge you accordingly, but I could probably knock it out pretty quick. PSC steering reservoir, um, had a run all day. It's literally, this kit is built for this truck. We're a big power steering solution shop. All the trophy trucks and everything we have, they're all PSS. But with this thing, I was like, you know what? This kit's 100% bolt on. I don't need to bug Charlie. So we did PSC everything. That includes the ram, the mounts, the box, the pump, everything. So, and it worked pretty good. So, uh, giant Canaan filter. A lot of this stuff was last minute. Like I said, we did this thing in 14, 15 days. So we got some like goofy unpainted tabs and some stuff like that. But then you see somewhere we missed a lot of the paint. We thought we had it all painted, but it's all rusted now. But it's okay. It fits the nostalgia of the truck. That's how you ruin a 95. Ford F-150 Ford Lightning.